Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name's Garrett and today we're going to be talking about this little machine right here. This is the Polisher. And now before we get started with this review, I do want to throw out a little disclaimer. Um, and that is that they sent me this machine for free to review. They did not pay me and all the opinions here are 100% my own, but they did supply me with this unit. Okay, so I'm sure a lot of you know what this machine is and what it does, but for those of you who don't, I'm going to talk a little bit about what it is and what it does. So first of all, you do have to print with their specific filament. This is called PolySmooth. It's by Polymaker. And from what people tell me, it is a PVB-based filament. Um, don't quote me on that. But basically, this is a special type of filament that dissolves and starts to erode when it comes into contact with IPA, isopropyl alcohol. So you take that filament and then you print it on your 3D printer just like any other filament. Um, I've actually been printing it at my uh, standard PLA settings, so it prints really, really easily. It pretty much prints just like the other PLAs that I use, which is great. But once you're done printing it, you take it, put it on one of these little platforms, and then stick it inside of this machine. You load this machine up with some isopropyl alcohol, then after the object lowers down into this chamber, it starts spraying the alcohol around, creates a mist, and starts smoothing out the object. Now this is kind of one of those things where you have to find a sweet spot for each model because if you don't do it enough, it's not going to smooth out all the lines. But if you leave it in there for too long, it can easily start to melt your object and just start destroying it. Now I did want to mention that this is just a review video. This is not a step-by-step -step tutorial. So I'm not going to actually go into all the different steps it takes to operate this machine. But it is very, very simple and it basically comes down to lowering the object in there, setting a time, and letting it do its thing. Now smoothing these objects out can be kind of a double-edged sword. Because like I mentioned before, um, you can remove a lot of the layer lines, which gives you a much nicer finish. But you can also lose some details in that process. But another really cool thing you can do that is sort of a side effect of erasing the layer lines is you can print ridiculously clear objects. You can see a couple of them on the desk here. I will show those in greater detail in just a second. But one thing that is very important to note as we move forward is that this is not a miracle worker. It does an amazing job of getting rid of the layer lines, but if you don't have your printer dialed in and you have some weird layer wobbles, it won't be able to fix those completely. So like I said, it is a great tool that helps in improving the surface quality, but it is not a miracle worker. So before I talk about what I like and what I don't like about this machine, I'm going to show you the results of some of my prints and sort of let them speak for themselves to begin with. So my normal test prints when I go to try out a new machine or new equipment, I usually go with some of my models that don't need supports. And the best ones to do that are Kirby and Babom because they have a really nice curve to them so it shows off imperfections really, really easily. So this is what Babom looked like before polishing. This is just straight off the printer. And this is what he looks like after polishing. So you'll immediately notice that he's a lot shinier and the layer lines and the weird patterns that you see are no longer there. This model works very well for this type of thing. And this is the before of the Kirby model and this is the after. And you'll notice it's very similar, it looks very good. But if we flip to the top view, it actually illustrates my point about it not being a miracle worker. So on the sides where the layers were closer together and there wasn't as much of a gap in between them, it almost completely smoothed them out and it looks amazing. But towards the top, where the layers get farther and farther apart in the X and Y direction, it becomes harder for it to smooth those properly. So it still looks better than just having the print off the bed, but you can definitely still see those. And if you wanted it perfectly smooth, you would still have to go to sanding and your normal finishing techniques. And then let's talk about the clear filament. So this is clear polysmooth. It prints just like all of the other polysmooth filaments. And this one's kind of a crazy pattern so it doesn't illustrate it super well. But you can see that if I stick my hand in, you can definitely still see my hand through it. And doing this type of thing, you can get some really cool effects like this crazy vase here. But these two models show it off a little bit better. Um, they were printed on the exact same printer, the exact same settings. We printed just two copies of them, polished one of them, and left one of them unpolished. So here you can see the difference. And the clear is still decently clear. You can see fingers through it. It just doesn't have as much detail. But the smoothed version is a lot closer to glass. You can see right through it. And aside from any weird patterning or layer lines, um, it's almost perfect. And then as you can see, I have a few other models here that we made uh, for other videos on our channel using the polisher. And now these have been painted by my wife, but if you've ever tried to finish a 3D print and make it look not 3D printed, you will undoubtedly know the struggle of sanding until your fingers are raw. My wife finishes all of these, so this is something she knows extremely well. And that's actually why Polisher sent us this, to see if we could reduce some of that sanding time. 
And now we can't use the polisher for every single model that we do, but every model that we can use with this, it has greatly reduced the post-processing time because Chelsea barely has to sand. She just has to fix up some areas like where the supports might have been a little rough or any printer errors before we stick it in the polisher. And she no longer has to get in there and sand like crazy to make it smooth. But I do want to mention again that you will lose some detail. So it's not a perfect process, but it does help a lot on some models. We've also created several other things on the channel that have used the polisher. I will put a link up in the eye in the corner to a playlist where you can watch all of the videos that we use the polisher on it and you guys can see the results for yourself. So now that you've seen the results, let's talk about my actual review of this machine and what I think about it. We're gonna start with what I like about it. And the first one should be pretty obvious. I love how smooth things look when they come out of this thing. And anytime that I can make life just a little bit easier on Chelsea and not force her to sand like crazy on these small little models, that is absolutely a good thing. Another thing I really like is how easy this machine is to use. The setup was very quick. We just had to install the little nebulizer in here, pour in some alcohol, and it was pretty much ready to go. Then once those are set up, all you really have to do to um, polish a model is you click a button, this thing rises up, you stick the model on the little platform in there, it goes down there, smooths for however long you tell it to, you click it, comes back up, and then you just have to wait for it to dry. They've done a really, really good job of making this very intuitive, very user-friendly, and it's a lot safer than acetone smoothing, say, with ABS. Another thing I really like about this is the filament. A lot of times when you have specialty filament, they can be very difficult to print with. You have to have precise settings. Sometimes certain printers can't print them as well. But my experience with PolySmooth, it has printed no different than PLA. In fact, a lot of times I've used the exact same G-code that I print something with PLA to print with this. Now on the box, they do say they recommend a temperature of 210 to 230. I'm not exactly sure why they recommend that because at those temperatures, I was getting a lot of stringing. I actually normally print this at about 190 but it's just like any other filament that you use you'll want to experiment with it and dial in the temperatures for yourself but other than that there was no warping to speak of the layer adhesion was great the only thing that's really different about this filament is that it's a little bit more moisture sensitive than your normal PLA or ABS you won't want to leave this on the roll overnight attached to your printer as soon as you finish the print you'll want to seal it back inside a bag just to make sure it stays good for as long as you need it to another thing I really like is how nice this machine looks and how cool it looks while it's running they added a little LED that changes colors in the back and it kind of lights up the mist as it goes and it's just very very cool to look at. So now let's talk about what I don't like about this. As I mentioned before you do lose a bit of detail on these prints so if you have something that's decently tiny has a lot of small detail this is probably not the best option for you. But even then it's just a matter of finding the right balance between smoothing and overdoing it. So you'll just want to experiment and find the right balance for each model that you do. Because even on highly detailed things you could probably get it to help out just slightly so maybe all the lines weren't gone but you could still get a little bit of smoothing so maybe filler primer could do the rest of the legwork for you. Another one of my complaints was actually the chamber size. Now this platform right here is actually all the bigger you can do because it lowers into the chamber on this and there's a frame all the way around it that you have to let the model pass through. So if the model is bigger than this platform, it won't actually go down there and sit properly which we've run into this limitation a couple times. We've actually had to try and kind of like angle it in there a specific way to get it to go down and not mess up. But as long as you keep that in mind, it should be all right. Another thing we noticed is that the um, alcohol doesn't seem to circulate very well. I know the nebulizer kind of pushes it around a little bit, but um, I would like to see maybe a fan or something in there to help kind of push it around. I don't know, they're the experts, not me. But we did find that we had to take the model out and rotate it and put it back in because most of the smoothing came from above. So say that it was something that was close to a sphere, like Kirby, when we would put it in there just sitting normally, the top of it would get smooth, but the underside would still be kind of rough. So what we'd have to do is take it and flip it over, put it back in and smooth it again, which normally wouldn't be an issue. But as I mentioned previously, the size, you kind of have to orient things properly if they're a little bit too big, and that can be a factor. But my next complaint actually ties into this as well, and that is the build plate and these little pokey things. I know why they're there, and that is to raise the model up a little bit so alcohol can get underneath of it, and it's not just sitting in a pool of alcohol melting. But as the model is smoothing, it does get a little bit softer to the touch. So one, when you're taking out on the machine, you don't want to touch it a lot. You want to let it dry completely. 
but while it's in here, it is pretty soft, and sometimes these little nibs can actually dig into it. We had this happen with our Cuphead models. There's just little circular spots over the area of the model that was touching the build plate. Now, ultimately, those aren't too hard to sand out, and I don't really know what the fix for that would be, but it's just something to keep in mind. And that was pretty much it for my experiences with this machine. Overall, I would say that I really love this machine and I'm definitely going to be using it well into the future. So if you're curious and want to know more about this, definitely hit that subscribe button because I will be posting more videos talking about this and I might do some specific videos on different things and different techniques with using the polisher. So in closing, who do I think this machine is for? Um, I definitely think it's for people like me that um, surface quality is most of what I care about in a print. A lot of the things I print are decently small. We usually end up painting a lot of them. So surface finish is pretty much the only metric that we care about. Especially round models that have really big details, not a lot of tiny stuff, like Kirby, like Babom, like these slimes here, this is absolutely perfect for because it will smooth it out and do most of the legwork in the post-processing process for you. Now, I haven't really talked about price yet, and I normally do that with printers because I can compare them to other printers in that price range, but with this, there's nothing really else to compare it to other than completely different technologies. So I didn't think price was as much of a factor, but you can usually find this machine for around $300 USD at the time of making this video. And the filament itself you can usually find for around $30 to $40 USD. So let's talk about the filament first. It is more expensive than the normal PLAs that I use because I usually buy $15 to $25 in that range, but it's not that much more expensive. And if it's saving you time and getting you a better surface finish, then I totally think that's worth it if you can afford to make that jump. And then the polisher itself. I think this, where this is going to fit in the market is for someone who wants more from their FDM machines but doesn't want to make the leap to SLA just yet. Because this can definitely take your FDM prints to a new level. It's not expensive compared to other printers, other machines that could potentially print slightly better. So you can take your existing 3D printers, supplement them with this and that filament, and get better quality prints from it. And that's really a great thing. And that's without having to buy new machines or make the jump to SLA, which is much more expensive and can be kind of a pain in the butt to deal with and a lot messier. So to people in that area that want a little bit more from their FDM machines, I can 100% recommend this machine. Because like I said, we will be using this well into the future. All right guys, well that's it for me. Let me know what you think of this down in the comments. Let me know, do you have one? Do you like it? Are you thinking about getting one? Just let me know down there. And then if you want to see more about this printer, I will include some affiliate links down below. You can click those. Um, I've got one to Amazon and also to Matter Hackers, wherever you prefer to shop. And now those are affiliate links. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but if you buy something using those links, a little bit of it comes back to us and helps support the channel. Don't forget to check out that playlist of models that I've made using this machine. And that's it for me. Until next time, keep creating.